In the Gospel today, we hear Jesus say to his disciples, As the Father loves me, so I also love you. If you were at uh, one of my weekend Masses this past weekend, you heard me say, Jesus is saying to us, Do you have any idea how much I love you? And when you think about it, no, we don't. We don't have a clue. Because we only can conceptualize just a tiny bit how much the Father loves Jesus. He says, that's how much He loves us. That the very internal workings of, of the Trinity, where for all eternity the Father is pouring Himself out completely to the Son, and the Son is receiving that pouring out from the Father, and that union of love is the Holy Spirit. That love that God the Father has for God the Son, from all eternity, God the Son has for you, for me. Do you have any idea how much I love you? No, no, no I don't. Not even a clue. Every hint of it that we have is just that, a vague shadow, a mist, a, a, a hint. How incredible God's love is for you, for me. In the Magnificat today, there was a reflection that they took from St. Teresa of Calcutta about that love. You know. She says, a few weeks ago, I had an extraordinary experience of this tenderness of God for the little one. A man came to our house with a prescription from a doctor. He said the child was dying. His only child was dying in the slums of Calcutta. And, the medic and that medicine could not be got in, in India anywhere. It had to be brought, brought from England. As we were talking, a man came with a basket of medicines. He had gone round to the families and gathered half-used medicines for our poor people. We have these mobile clinics all over the slums of Calcutta and all over the place. And they go around to the families and gather half-used medicines and bring them to us. And we give them to the poor people. And there he came. And right on top of the basket was that medicine. I just couldn't believe because if it was inside, I would not have seen it. If he had come before or after, I would not have connected. I just stood in front of the basket and kept looking at the bottle. In my, and in my mind I was saying, millions and millions and millions of children in the world. How could God be concerned with that little child in the slums of Calcutta to send that medicine? To send that man, just at that time, to put that medicine right on the top, and to send the full amount that the doctor had prescribed. See how precious that little one was to God himself? How concerned he was for that little one? The tenderness of God's love. No one can love us as God. He has made us in his image. He made us. He is our Father. The Father loves me, He wants me, He needs me. That kind of attitude is our trust, our joy, our conviction. Anything may come, impatience, failures, joy. But say to yourself, the Father loves me. God has created the whole world, but He is our Father. In prayer, create that conviction from the inside, Father and Child. We get these little glimpses of the tenderness and the providence of Almighty God, how He takes care of those little things so that we can remember in our own struggles when it doesn't seem that God is there, it doesn't seem that God is caring, we can say, no, wait, He does. He's watching me and He loves me. And He's not going to leave me abandoned, even if I feel empty right now, even if I do feel abandoned. As the Father loves me, so I also love you. Do you have any idea how much I love you? And then Jesus says, remain in my love. He never takes his love away from us. Sometimes we might wander away from that love. Sometimes by our sin we turn away from that love. I think God is always there ready to embrace us. 
But sometimes we're like that teenager that turns away and God comes up and tries to embrace us from the back. We're like, get away from us. Get away from me. If you keep my commandments, you will remain in my love. Jesus will never stop loving us, but we sometimes walk away. But all it takes to get back to that love is just a turning. He's always calling out, but we have to be able to receive it. We just have to turn like the prodigal son. He was still a long way off from God. He hadn't made all his way back to the Father. And he didn't even make a very good confession, as it were. But he had turned. He had turned back. He opened his heart a crack, even though it was in part for selfish reasons. May we, in our brokenness, Turn back to the God who loves us so tenderly, so infinitely, so intimately. And allow him to love us, to draw us into his love, so that we may remain in that love.